So you'll notice that there is a teeter-totter, which is shown here, which I'm highlighting. And this young lady is standing on one end. This one's in the air. And effectively, at that moment in time when the picture was shot, it was essentially a stationary teeter-totter. Here, I'll draw this a little bit more distinctly. So she's on a teeter-totter, and there's a support point that is visible here. Okay, so it's effectively stationary, effectively static at that point. So we want to draw a free body diagram for it. So let me show you a color version of this, uh, of this picture and see if that helps at all in terms of the, uh, the description. All right, so this is a blow, blown up view and I've highlighted the pieces and you can see that the, uh, uh, that the legs of the, uh, of the one individual are, are out of the picture. So really, for, in this view, you can think of it as being static. Okay, so we want to think about a free body diagram. So take a minute, right, and sketch a free body diagram on here and see whether or not yours ultimately is going to agree with mine. Okay, so think about it. The easiest one to do, of course, is the weight of this individual. And remember, this is the free body diagram of the plank. So we want to focus on the plank, the forces that act on the plank itself. So it's the red part that goes diagonally here. So clearly there's an mg force that comes about from the center of mass, this young lady, but acts, the point of action is actually where her feet contact the board or contact the plank. The plank is touching the ground at this point, right? So there needs to be a force that counteracting that. And the question is how long should this one be? Also, there's a support here. So clearly there's a force pointing up that's right here. Right, And then wherever the center of mass is, wherever you think the center of mass is for the plank, however much it weighs, it probably weighs less than the people, right? it should be pointing down. Okay, So those are the, the ones that I would describe. Those are the ones that, uh, that I would give. This one it should be specified as the mass of the girl times g. This is some normal force. We could call it normal force ground. Right? This is also some normal force. We could call this normal force uh, fulcrum, if you want, N sub F. And this one is the M of the plank times G. Right? All of those forces summed together, assuming it's static, should equal zero. When we assume it's static, we assume it's perfectly rigid, right? And there's no bending or anything in it. It's perfectly straight at this point. So we can see how close this particular drawing compares to what I sketched beforehand. Since I'm, hopefully it's close in agreement. Right? I didn't put the designations of the two things on there, but clearly it's, uh, it's pretty close. There are four forces, two going up, two going down, and those are the forces that are acting on the plank. That would be the free body diagram of the plank. Now before they started this process, in fact before they really got going on this particular example, Right, They were, and we'll treat this as stationary, even though you can see she's raising her arms and this is actually how they began. Right, This is a different situation, so how do things change? What do you expect to happen? Well, if we go into a comparison of one to the next, right, we know that we're going to have to add, in terms of the forces that are acting here, we're going to have to add a force here right, that corresponds to her mass. And that means that the forces pushing up are going to have to, the net forces are going to have to increase. And in fact, their distribution might change. And that might be an important point to think about. So, so far, in terms of this description, we can look here. And this, the one on the top, is this first set that, that I described. Let me grab a different color. So, this is the, the first case. And this is the second case. You notice the larger mass here. Notice that this one got larger because there's more mass total. But notice that I, this actual mass that was here, I actually made it smaller. Now I probably exaggerated its size, right? But clearly this one's going to change, right? When this one comes about. Now, so far we've talked about the summation of forces, right? We know the forces have to be equal to zero in any direction. In order for it to be static, in order for it to be stationary, the summation of the forces in all directions have to be equal to zero. 
So that means all of the forces with x components, if we sum them all together, they have to be equal to zero. We sum together all the forces with y components, they have to be equal to zero. We sum together all the forces with z components, they have to be equal to zero. Okay? If we want to take into account the effect that this force has in changing the balance of forces here, we have to go a little bit further and we have to take into account the moments. Okay? So we have to take into account the moments. And the moments, right, also have to sum to zero. If they don't sum to zero, it's not stationary. So summation of forces and summation of moments is essential in order to describe the station how this body should be stationary. Okay? It's an important point to remember, an important point to think about the characteristics of moments, and we'll talk about that in the next lecture. In the meantime, remember that MathCAD is fun. It looks like math. You can plot inside the calculation window. The relearning curve is short, and I think the keyboard entry, once you understand it, the keyboard entry is pretty fast.